Hi everyone and welcome to the next installment of Magnus Watch. Carrying on with the same factors as we decided for the last video, here's a game he played against Timur Rajabov, who he will face in the Candidates Tournament in March. It was played at the Pearl Springs Tournament in 2009. Carlson had white and opened with e4, which is what he has played more than half of the time over his career. Rajabov is one of those interesting players who plays very safe with white and goes for the jugular every time with black. He is undoubtedly the greatest proponent for the King's Indian offense alive and against uh, King's Pawn he is fond of playing the Sicilian which he did here with c5. And play continued with knight f3 and now knight c6 and bishop b5 the Rosso Limo variation which avoids the more open main lines. Black of course has several ops here and Rajabov elected for e6 aiming for uh, knight g e7 and a quick d5 to try and stake a stronger claim to the center and uh, Carlson just castled good to castle early and after knight g e7 he played c3 which prevents any knight d4 ideas which can be kind of annoying to hassle this bishop although um, you know there is the option of doubling the black pawns it can be dynamic to have these uh, these central pawns so uh, c3 prevents that and uh, you know, plays for later d4 break to further expand and gain space in the center. So next came a6, put in the question to the bishop, and he can't uh, double the pawns here, even if he wanted to give up the, di the bishop pair. So he uh, played bishop a4, which you know is the only move that's consistent with his previous play. And after b5, he played bishop c2. And uh, Rajabov didn't want to play uh, d5 right away. Uh, went instead for bishop b7 reckoning that it was wisest to make one more preparatory move before playing d5 which is you know what black's strategy is revolving around in uh, this particular opening Carlson continued with queen e2 and this is so that he can respond to d5 with e5 and you know there's already two pieces defending this e5 pawn which white will hope to cramp black with and given the squares that the black pieces are on in particular the knight here on e7 it doesn't make sense for white to exchange on d5 because it allows black to liberate his position when knight takes d5 then he can develop the bishop and castle and at the moment you know this e7 knight is hindering the development of the bishop and that's a good thing as far as white is concerned and something of an, an annoyance for black and so Carlson elects to force Rajabov into bearing this annoyance for a few more moves. Another idea behind uh, Queen e2 is to follow up with Rook d1 and create some tactical pressure against the black queen and that wasn't seen in this game but it's uh, common idea in many of the openings. And overall it can be argued that white is slightly better here given the cramped black pieces but white's undeveloped queen side are in a somewhat similar situation. You know his, uh, his pieces here aren't developed. And the main difference is that black is unable to castle which you know should be something to be concerned about. So Rajabov continued with d4, which uh, gains space in the center and it enables knight d5 and you know the development of the bishop and to get castled. And Carlson answered with a bishop e4, which pins the c6 knight because this bishop is loose. And Rajabov was worried enough about this to fix it right away with the queen b6 and interestingly he's a player of the French defense and so he's well accustomed to creating play on the Queen side 
like this. And in fact, he beat Kasparov with uh, the French defense when he was 15, which, you know, obviously is no small feat. Here, however, it may have been more prudent simply to play knight d5. Black has absolutely nothing to fear, and on the contrary, his knight is excellently placed here, and he can follow up with bishop e7 and get castled. Also playable was uh, knight g6 with the same ideas in mind, as well as attacking the uh, e5 pawn here once his pin has been fixed. But queen b6 is what Rajabov played. And uh, Carlson continued with d3, which is just bolstering this bishop and getting ready to get the queenside pieces into the game. Rajabov answered with the rook d8, which is another of the reasons behind queen b6, as well as relieving the pressure of this pin, is to move a rook to d8 and enable rook takes d5 in the event of knight takes d5 and bishop sorry knight 2d5 and bishop takes d5 and you know after that he could in theory hope to pile pressure on the d3 pawn here which can become backward after uh, d takes c3 but of course you know white doesn't have to trade on d5 and allow that to happen but you know it's what Rajabov chose to play for instead and you know Black's play is understandable and his queenside play here is dynamic but something you have to be very careful about when playing strong players is overstretching. I say strong players because you can often get away with it against average players as they don't know how to exploit it so well and may not even consider it as a factor of the game until you know it's blatantly obvious. Carlsen on the other hand is the ultimate positional player and can sense immediately if his opponent has overstretched in any way. Here he played a4 and what this does is highlight the weakening effect that Black's advancing on the queen side has created. As well as the fact that uh, moving his rook off a8 has made this a file juicy for the rook on a1. Now Rajabov answered with knight d5, which you know is consistent with his previous play, but this gives white a small edge, and you know Carlson has played for this very idea, as he knows black will have to move the knight in order to get castled, and you know playing like g6 and bishop g7 instead is definitely too weakening and it's the ability to judge factors like this that makes brilliant players and Carlson is superbly astute at such things. Instead of uh, knight d5 Fritz preferred d takes c3 for black followed up after b takes c3 with b4 giving the position as equal after bishop e3 but it's hard to agree with that because uh, black is now even more overstretched than he was before and this is something that engines generally don't consider or understand and the truth is that white will be able to exploit this and in the meantime is building a strong center whilst black still remains at least three moves away from castling so it's fair to say that white would be better so we go back to the game continuation and we see what uh, Carlson continued with now. A takes b5 was the move, and Rajabov answered a takes b5. So now this uh, a file becomes open, but the rook is automatically in the game. Uh, obviously, playing instead queen takes b5 is a mistake after c4, and it's winning a piece for example queen b6, c takes d5, e takes d5 and bishop f5 with a simple straightforward win for uh, white. Okay, that's the end of part one.